All right, today we're diving into the metaverse in another special way, and that is through the fashion angle. Take a look at a deep dive on the Metaverse Fashion Week, some of the projects involved in this, and really kind of dive in deep. I love to see this, especially in the metaverse today. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Metaverse Insider. Today joining me is Stephen Leeton, who is the head of experiences and environments over at Boson Protocol. You're going to learn a lot about Boson Protocol, but more importantly, what this is really kind of connecting the dots to is how fashion is becoming a thing in the metaverse. Stephen, thanks so much for stopping in today. Thank you for having me. A real pleasure to be here. Um, fascinating things have happened over the last few days and excited to share our insight, our capabilities with yourselves and your viewers. Excellent. Stephen, first let's learn a little bit about Boson Protocol. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you guys are up to, overall project, obviously the connection to Metaverse Fashion Week. Kind of give us the, the 101. Sure. So my name is Stephen Leeton. I'm Head of Experiences and Environments here at Boson Protocol. Boson Protocol, we're focused on building the decentralized network to enable future commerce. We are a Web3 e-commerce tech stack. Our founders, Justin Bannon, who previously grew Priority Pass, which is a digital voucher marketplace from 50 million to a billion, as well as our other co-founder, Gregor Barossa, who's a tech co-founder and lead engineer from within payment systems and central banking. What we've achieved here at Boson Protocol is we've managed to solve one of these big problems where smart contracts are totally disconnected from real world commerce. It's one of these main Oracle problems. We've been able to create trusted data sources that brings physical products on chain. What does this mean? Is that it allows us to have a, few, uh, a variety of applications, products, features and capabilities that give rise to a new form of commerce. We're focused on integrating our technology into websites, games, and metaverses. And for now, we're focused on the metaverse. And what we enable is metaverse commerce. So, okay, so um, I look at fashion, and we've we've kind of analyzed this from our side of things. You know, in covering metaverse topics, a lot of the web three projects and protocols that are kind of in integrating in fashion has been one of the key sectors along with kind of the physical goods side of things that are really starting to percolate in terms of interest, especially around major brands. When you guys uh, put together the uh, element here that kind of involves uh, Metaverse Fashion Week, talk to me about some of the key things that you were trying to achieve with this overall project. Mm, absolutely. So Boson Protocol is this infrastructure layer. You could think of us as a digital payments infrastructure in its, in its simplest form. This infrastructure allows anybody to sell physical goods as NFTs from within the metaverse. So for Decentraland, which is where Metaverse Fashion Week took place, we're a strategic right. partner and our infrastructure can allow anybody to sell physical goods. Mm -hmm. What we've also built is Portal. Now Portal is our fully customizable brand environment for metaverse experience and metaverse commerce. What we built for Fashion Week was the Fashion District, and we welcomed a whole host of brands, whether it was your globally recognized brands like Tommy Hilfiger, or your leading NFT projects such as Deadfellas and Fangang. We built out this Fashion District, and you can think of it as a retail environment, a virtual retail environment. And so we brought a whole host of brands in, we built out their experience and their activation, this is what Portal is. Portal, the fully customizable brand environment for metaverse experience and commerce. It uses the infrastructure layer of Boson Protocol to enable the sale of physical goods from within there. So we were, our involvement here was two parts. One was as a infrastructure layer. The other was as, as an environment itself. We built out one of the main stages for Fashion Week and we were very excited to see this wave of mass adoption of various projects coming in to utilize and explore what the metaverse can mean for brands. I like, you know, we're showing some things on screen here, uh, obviously with uh, how Portal is utilized. And one, the integration is fairly elegant. It looks like major brands would want to be a part of this. I think in, in when we will see the future of commerce, especially around metaverse. And I guess the, the hybrid approach here of fashion being kind of one of the first things to do that. Do you feel that this has the potential to accelerate in the fashion industry faster, or do you think there will be some other uh, e-commerce or industries that may really start to take advantage of these kinds of tools and overall 
programs? I, I think the reason why fashion has been a, looked at as a, a main starting point is because the metaverse is avatar based. And mm -hmm. so there are a few things that have brought us to this point. One part, of course, is the, the digital transformation of society. More time than ever we are spending in these online worlds, whether it's as a social platform, whether it's as an extension of gaming and esports, more time than ever is being spent on these worlds. And so that gives rise to topics and conversations about identity. What, what does it mean to have a digital identity? How do we project ourselves into these digital realms? The psychology of self, the psychology of appearance. What does society mean in these realms? What does tribalism mean in these realms? People wish to project themselves in a certain way as fashion does in the real world. It will happen that same way in the digital worlds. So I think the reason why we're seeing fashion as an industry starting to pay attention to the metaverse first is because the metaverse and its current form is avatar based. And so you can dress, you can present your avatars in certain ways. Other industries are already looking in. Um, if you think of this as a new form of e-commerce, metaverse commerce is not 3D e-commerce. It's, mm -hmm. it's a new technology, new capabilities, new applications. And it, it opens up a whole new world of, of opportunities and possibilities. At Boson Protocol, we're speaking to a lot, a lot of brands, and it's not just from the fashion world. Vehicles, watches, any, any product, physical art, it really has an application here. And so in that sense, the metaverse is part social platform, part gaming platform, but for brands, it will form a part of omni-channel sales strategy. It is a yeah. new marketplace. It is a new platform. If we look at the evolution of the internet and what that meant for brands in the 90s, we were speaking to a lot of brands who talked about back then the thinking was, why would I need a website? Who is ever going to put their credit card and their bank details into a computer? And now look how far that has come. And so we're at this, this convergence of technologies once again, Web 1, Web 2, Web 3. We've gone from physical high streets to 2D screens, and now we're going into 3D worlds. And then also the cultural change, more time than ever is being spent on these worlds. So the metaverse is here, statistically speaking, it is here. 2.49 billion monthly active users of Facebook have just become active users with Meta. Nike acquiring Artifact. All of these statistics suggest that the metaverse is here and that people are using it. As ever, the congregation of people gives rise to culture, culture gives rise to commerce it will in turn become a sales channel. You will have your real physical stores, your e-commerce websites. We are seeing this wave of mass adoption where brands now want their metaverse channel as well. Omni-channel omni right. strategy, omni-channel marketing strategy. Yeah, I think the, the omni approach toward, um, I think commerce in general, but also the branding aspect of it, because that is one of the major things I think that Many people look to what's happening in the metaverse right now. You know, it's the early adopters, so it's usually more affluent consumers. There are people, obviously, that are fairly well versed in what's happening in Web3 and blockchain and, and kind of the overall evolution of crypto. So I think that in itself presents itself, much like the early days of the internet, it was had, had a lot of similarities to what was happening there. When you look at the size and scope, though, for instance, uh, just as an example, like for Metaverse Fashion Week on the runway shows, what was the example of, can you share with us any numbers on how many people attended or how many avatars attended? What was the overall um, expanse of the project in terms of volume? Yeah, uh, Decentraland um, had multiple contributors to this event. Um, and there were a few of our, our key partners involved as well. The statistics of which uh, seem to be ever growing. I remember the early days of Decentraland and you would arrive in the uh, Genesis Plaza, which is the entry point for anybody mm -hmm. who drops in, minimal minimal use. And we've seen it ramp up over the, the coming months. When we originally had these conversations with brands, it was about 300,000 monthly users. We've seen that progress to 500,000 monthly users. For mm -hmm. Boston Portal, our environment in Decentraland, we saw just shy of 50,000 unique visitors. Now, that is a huge number for what is such an early, early stage right. of this platform. Overall numbers for Decentraland, I believe we're still waiting for that feedback. For, but for Boston Portal itself, just shy of 50,000 is a really, really high number. And uh, yeah, it was a fantastic four days. 
as a proof point of what is to come. This is the early evolution of decentralized commerce. And as you'll see in the coming weeks and months, there's a lot more capabilities and functions coming out of the V2 of our protocol that gives rise to a whole new wave of opportunities for brands, consumers, and audiences alike. Yeah, the convergence of NFT, uh, digital wear, especially on the fashion side, artifact had, had has really kind of, I think, pioneered some of this. Also, we've seen a handful of other companies and projects that are starting moving in this direction in terms of NFT aspects of how this can work in the fashion industry. And, and we'll see it in, in other industries as well. There's This is just the beginning, I'm sure. When you look at that, and especially with what you guys did with Metaverse Fashion Week, how successful was that in terms of the convergence of people purchasing an NFT and getting that converted to an in real world asset or or fashion piece delivered to their you know to their front door? What did that look like? Yeah, well, and, and as you described it, there is is exactly that it is is the exchange of digital value resulting in physical um, products. So yeah, Boson Protocol within the metaverse, we enable the sale of physical goods as NFTs. So we brought in this whole wave of brands, all of which had physical products for sale. So as you can see in here, you have these kiosks in front of you, as you would in a standard retail environment, you go up, you click, and you can, you can engage with the product. So this is worth noting that this all happens in verse. This is metaverse commerce. This is not a 3D environment that will take you right. out to a website. It all happens in place. So you can see the items in front of you, as you would expect from a normal commerce platform. You have your images, your descriptions, you connect your wallet, you commit, and what you've purchased is that NFT. That NFT can then be traded before it is redeemed. And so it opens up tradable, programmable, gamified experiences relating to the NFT. I like that, you know, we're, we're actually uh, in Decentraland here live on this one to just to kind of show the expand, really kind of the overall experience, which I think is, to me, this is a very fascinating approach because I think one, it, it's going to start having some impact on consumer behavior. And we have saw it with the evolution of, you know, the credit card going into the internet for the very first time, looking at e-commerce, how that eventually became just pretty much normal everyday life today. And do you think we're within the decade of seeing that kind of adoption rate within the metaverse, or do you think we still may be outside of that or just a couple years away? I think it's a very good question. I think many technologies are created that the people, we the people do not adopt. And so the metaverse is here. What does it look like for the years to come? How quickly will this get amplified or integrated into the way we live our lives? But I think to go over the points mentioned before, let's look at the statistics. Statistically speaking, more time than ever is being spent in these online worlds, online gaming, in-game purchases are obviously to really quite astronomic numbers at the moment. So I think if we talk about the evolution to Web3, of course, there's going to be a transitional period. It's not going to happen overnight. Web 1 to Web 2 took a decade. Web 2 to Web 3, I think, is still going to be an evolution. Many talking points of Web 3 have, have not yet been built. They are being built and they will be applied. So Web 3, I think we are in this transitional stage and we will eventually see this reintroduction of, of, of technologies built upon Web 3 technology. The metaverse as well, social platform, gaming platform, retail environment, it is here, it is being used, but it will forever be iterated and evolved, much like you'd right. experience with your, your regular websites and games. What we are seeing right now is many, many brands want to explore what it means for them. How can they connect to new audiences? How can they enhance their relationship with their existing audiences? It's an opportunity for brands to explore new, immersive, integrated experiences. And then using Boson Protocol technology, it gives a, a, a whole wave of, 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 of new uh, and exciting yeah, applications and opportunities that aren't necessarily possible in the real world. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think this does start to create that omni experience, both from the consumer side, obviously the brand side. It's going to be interesting too, because the amount of creativity that brands can now deploy 
in terms of design, functional features, even maybe new layers of what a product can be in terms of an NFT versus the in real world uh, asset mm -hmm. or the product itself. It, it'll be interesting because there'll be some digital uh, elements, I think, and we've talked to some designers here who are layering in essentially kind of a whole new layer of fashion design that is giving a, a digital format as well as how it translates over to in real world uh, metaware, metaware um, overall. So I think that in itself is going to create kind of that that whole new uh, innovation around the space for sure, just from a creativity standpoint. So lots happening there. Yeah. Talk to me about the um, the Nifty Key NFT based loyalty reward pro program partnership. How can you can you guys share what you're doing with them? Sure. C consider it um, Boson Protocol is the infrastructure layer, and we have portal which is an application built on top mm -hmm. of uh, boson protocol uses our the the infrastructure layer for the commerce nifty key is a nft based loyalty rewards application again it's built on top of boson protocol and it uses that redemption infrastructure so it empowers companies to reward users with both fidget fidget um digital and physical real world and metaverse rewards we talk about, if I take it back to the metaverse as a new digital environment, there's a lot of conversation about whether it's an extension of real life or it's to, to replicate and replace real life. Now, as we mm. see it, it's an extension. Boson Protocol technology has created this bridge between digital and physical that, that, that hasn't happened before. When we're speaking to brands, it's not that your digital marketing campaign will inform physical um, products it, it can now be connected to it so we're seeing this digital physical bridge or digital as we see it so goods in the future your luxury your high-end your rare collectible scarce items you will see it coming as a digital asset you buy the physical you get the digital or vice versa buy it in store and you can redeem both digital and physical buy it inverse and you can redeem both We've really managed to cross that bridge between the digital realms and the physical realms, not as separate, but now they are connected by Boson Protocol. So to go back to Nifty Key, Nifty Key is an NFT based loyalty rewards program, the rewards of which span both digital and physical. So yeah. you have airport lounges, hotels, spas, whatever it might be, customer engagement metrics and rewards for loyalty. You can have real world rewards, inverse metaverse rewards, um, and they can span both. So yeah, Nifty Key, loyalty based NFT rewards program built on top of Boson Protocol that uses the redemption layer to give these rewards to customers um, and yeah, fans and audiences. I think that's going to be a unex well, loyalty today is one of the key elements in any successful commerce. And even in-store environment success programs is is how well those loyalty programs are run. So I think applying that into metaverse applications and then also digital applications for a brand, especially in Web3, is going to be very fascinating. It'd be interesting to see because I can imagine all the brands and how they're thinking of, of really kind of changing what loyalty is in terms of achievement layers. If you just think about the gamification of what's happened already, in blockchain gaming, there's going to be some fun stuff, I think, uh, from a, a loyalty aspect that will really kind of break some of the boundaries that are out there uh, for sure. Yeah. All right. So when when you look at the the landscape and you think metaverse, all right, we've done something with uh, Metaverse Fashion Week. We've explored this model, Boson being the layer in which a lot of this could be integrated what would be some of the other metaverse environments that you guys would look at partnering with or potentially in your roadmap that you can share? So what we would like to achieve with Boson Protocol are the working relationship with, with brands in multiple platforms, as you say. So the metaverse is not one space. You know, Think of it sure. as social media and social media platforms. There's the metaverse and there's these different platforms. Interoperability is something that we're focused on. We're uh, one of the founding members of the Open Metaverse DAO. We want these cross-platform opportunities to exist. We're currently in Decentraland, and we were the largest purchase of land um, back in the day, and that is where we've built on for Portal. 
we have a number of key partnerships with a lot of the other platforms um, and yeah we're ready to start launching and expanding out into them so our roadmap takes us to other platforms and we're also working with a whole host of brands as they build out their metaverse strategy we are their chosen partner that can bring their ideas to light um, I would love to share some more insight as to what's coming, um, but I, I think what I'll have to say is just subscribe to our channels, keep an eye out, because there, there's a, a whole world of announcements to come. It's important to mention, that as we are talking about decentralization and Web3, that we're talking about self-sovereignty in digital environments. We're talking about yeah. you know civilian empowerment and stuff like this. So we're focused on working with your recognizable global marquee brands, as well as your independent creators, smaller projects, because we're, we want to create a fair and equitable environment for all. So we're, we're currently working at top projects, new projects, infant projects, and we're working with them on their roadmap so that as we go to different platforms and environments, they too can come on that journey and we're doing it them together. I, I will just have to say, keep an eye out for the social media. The announcements are coming soon. Um, and you'll see the types of brands that we're working with. But yeah, a, a very exciting position to be in. This change in brand consumer behavior. What do these digital environments mean? And what do these new digital technologies mean? Boson right. Protocol is really in some fan, fascinating conversations, looking at the, the application of, of our technology to what it means for brands, real world treasure hunts, digital environments, physical environments, the merging of both. Real world brands can come into digital environments, physical products can come out, and the inf the experience that the audience can have, these are new immersive ways, can be both real life and digital. So we're seeing a whole host and a whole wave of adoption, interest from brands, and yeah, a, a really privileged position to be in that we are their chosen partner to, to fulfill their dreams and, and take them on this journey that they wanna be a part of. Yeah, this is going to be fun, I think, with uh, just seeing how brands are going to adopt into this area. I We were just invited to a Meta for Business uh, program from Meta, and I was interested, it was interesting the, the invitation that came to us of what they're trying to do in terms of explaining how the metaverse from Meta's standpoint is going to work on a direct-to-business model, obviously Facebook being one of the biggest e-commerce engines out there when it comes to how brands interface with consumers. This will be changing kind of the dynamic of that, I think, with what we'll see in the metaverse. But I guess the question to you would be, when you look at companies like that, you know, trillion dollar company, you also look at the payments industry, whether it's, you know, the traditional payment processors or even some of the companies that work within the e-commerce giant space, do you think they can make the transition into this area or do you feel like it's going to be companies like Boson that are going to lead the way? I know that's kind of a trick mm. question, but. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very good question though. And I think we just have to take it back to these new technologies, open up new possibilities. And it is yeah. not about plugging. It, this is not going to be e-commerce in the metaverse. This is going to be mm. metaverse commerce and, and decentralized commerce. Now, Last year was the year of NFTs. There is there is no doubt about it. What we think is this year will be the year of the digital, your digital physical assets enabled by the sound of, of, of NFTs. That's what we can do. That you are correct that Facebook becoming Meta is a leading e-commerce platform, but this is not e-commerce and, and, and this is not walled garden 3D environments. This is the metaverse community owned infrastructure built on top of blockchain, but on top of web three, it's a, there's a paradigm shift. There's a technological shift. There's a cultural shift. Uh, and the convergence of all of this gives rise to metaverse commerce, decentralized commerce. It is a extension. It is an evolution, but it's an opportunity for a new beginning. Uh, Facebook is Facebook and we wish them the best. It is, an, it is a, new, a new landscape that we are looking at here. And Boson Protocol is seeing, as, as mentioned, fascinating conversations on a whole wave of adoption coming from leading brands, leading outfits, leading organizations. So yeah, we, we, will see, we will see how it goes. I think what we've experienced are multiple theses, multiple proof points, and the Metaverse Fashion Week is, is one of many to come where we'll see a whole wave of what is what we are to look at. NFTs has taken a whole new world. 
NFTs with superpowers, giving utility to these NFTs and the application within commerce, we have managed to solve one of these biggest problems. There's about nine PhDs on our protocol team and it's taken a year of building to get to this point. What is this point? It's very clean, very engaging, end-to-end commerce function for new platforms such as the metaverse. Yeah, I, I think this is a, a new set of both expectations from the technology evolution of what we'll see in Web3 Web and blockchain as it develops out to where companies are going to be looking for new, new, not only new players, but really new ideas of how to yeah. adopt into this. Because I think you're right, using old methodologies in this new world of what we're seeing within metaverse i'm just not sure just like it was in the day that the internet was born i was there i had a chance to be with some of the biggest tech companies in silicon valley and it was a different world it was these startup companies that were essentially repainting the future of digital and it wasn't the old guard that was bringing it in it was a lot of the new startups that really uh, kind of identified and also accelerated the space so i i do see that happening again here with what we're seeing with web 3 and uh, definitely on the convergence of web 2 it'll be interesting i think the players will be uh, interesting to watch for sure. Stephen Leighton, it's been great having you on the show. Thank you so much for stopping in today. Good luck to you guys over at Boson Protocol. We're going to be watching you very closely. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. As always, do subscribe. Keep an eye out for what's going on online. A whole wave of announcements to come and a very exciting future. Fingers crossed. Very cool. All right, you guys are tuned in over on the podcast right now. Make sure and jump in here to the YouTube channel. This is the place where you're going to catch all this stuff. And it's also the place where you can join our Diamond Circle. You get in on many of our other shows, Tech Path Crypto, and then obviously this show, Metaverse Insider. Uh, you can, of course, reach me, and it's out on Twitter. It's just at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on Metaverse Insider.